Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I, um, if you will turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 8, I want to say it's, it's an honor to, to teach you this morning and um, hope everybody is well and hope you're Hope you got meat thawing or in the crock pot. And uh, how'd you know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, um, I'm glad Sunday's here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> For more than one reason. <laughs> I want to say it's so good to see Brother Eric Edwards back. He's been out for a couple weeks for a surgery. We're so glad he's back. Amen. Amen. Give honor to our pastor and our pastor's wife. So thankful for them. Remember, pastor, in your prayers today. Acts chapter 8 and verse 30. If you're there, say, I'm there. If you're looking at the screen, say, just start reading. Okay, all right, I will. Give me a second. Before I read. <laughs> Before I read. I'm going to continue what I started to teach last week in understanding the Bible, understanding the Bible. If you were here last week, that was my subject. I talked about um, particular things about how to read, how to interpret, and so on. Um, I would suggest that you go back and take a listen to that if you were not here, maybe to better understand, but I think this, this lesson will stand be able to stand individually on its own so you're not going to be lost if uh, you weren't here last week but you're here this week. So let's let's get into the word. Acts chapter 8 and verse 30. The Bible says, And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? He desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Amen. I'm going to teach, teach today under, the second part of understanding the Bible. You may be seated. Now, for the sake of, for the sake of understanding, because that's what the, this lesson is about, I think it would be appropriate if we looked back to the Old Testament to what the eunuch was reading. If you'll turn in your Bible, if you brought your Bible, go to Isaiah chapter 53 and we'll read verses 7 and 8. Isaiah 53 verses 7 and 8. The Bible says, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. For the transgression of my people was he Stricken. Now, Isaiah was not writing according to something he had seen or experienced physically. But God revealed to him, however many years prior to the, to, to the, to the place where this was fulfilled, God revealed to Isaiah that there would be a day where he would robe himself in flesh where he would come to this earth and experience exactly what he records in these two verses. And so now, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 8, back to the place where the eunuch was reading, let, let me just jump into this, are you all okay? This is a great example of a way that we can study the Bible. We, I would encourage you, when, when, when you find that a New Testament author is, or a New Testament um, um, individual is referring to an Old Testament scripture, 
I would encourage you to stop and go back to the Old Testament and read that. For example, you will find in Acts chapter 2 a litany of verses that the Apostle Peter uh, talks about that pull that he pulls from the Old Testament. You will find that even Jesus Christ, all throughout his ministry, quotes scripture after scripture that base from the Old Testament. So I would encourage you for understanding, go back as you encounter those and read where they are. And so you'll find in Acts chapter 8, let's go to verse 32. Um, the Bible says, uh, so this is after Philip, he got... He, he came up um, with the eunuch, and, and the Bible says in 8 and 32, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like, like a, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. And his humiliation and judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? Do you see the repeating here? Do you see that? Who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Who, who's the prophet talking about? Of himself or of some other man? Verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Amen. Philip preached unto him Jesus. He understood the Old Testament scripture was referring to Jesus Christ and preached unto him Jesus. And Philip baptized that Ethiopian eunuch. And um, it, it's, it's an amazing story. But uh, let, let me review here with you for just a moment. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Whatever was written in the former days, talking about the word of God, was written for our instruction. And through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we have hope. The Bible is, it's an amazing book. It's it's, yes, one book, but it's also divided up into separate books, 66 separate books to be exact, yet it is not the collection of just literary pieces with, without regard of one to another. It is the only book, as we talked about this last week, that was written over a span of 1,500 years with approximately 40 different Authors from every walk of life, including princes and poets, philosophers and fishermen, prophets and priests, publicans and politicians. Yet, despite all of these differences, all of the different writers and times, the Bible presents one single story of God's redemption of fallen man. Somebody say, Amen. The Bible is our way is our way, is our connection to God. We feel Him, we experience His Spirit, and I'm thankful for that, and we must have it. But we cannot navigate this life without His Word. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is truth, the Bible says. Thy Word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against Thee, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. The word of God, it's, it's alive, it's active, it's moving, and it's necessary for us to have spirit and truth. We must have both. Show me a, a church with spirit and no truth, you will find a church of chaos. So me, show me a church, on the other hand, with all truth and no spirit, 
I'll show you a dried up dead church that, that, that runs people off because they beat people over the head with the word of God. We've got to have both spirit and truth. We've got to have both working together. We can't get too high on one and low on the other or, or vice versa. We've got to have them both working together in our lives. Amen. It's not either or, it's both and. We've got to have the spirit and we've got to have the truth. Somebody say amen. Well, I'm too, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we developed these mentalities over the years, and especially people that have grown up in church. Well, I, I, I'm just, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm not as enthusiastic as I used to be. I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not as, you know, it's just different for me now. I'm more mature. I'm more, I, I'm more this, I'm more now. When in reality, what they're saying is the spirit is diminishing in my life. There is never a point where we reach a place where we are exempt from being engulfed, involved in the spiritual working of God. There's never a place where we're exempt from, from clapping our hands. There's never a place where we're exempt from lifting our hands. There's never a place where we're exempt from leaping and praising God. Why? Because the Bible talks about that. It's not a command for new believers. It's a command for all believers. We don't mature into acting a certain way in church. We mature and act that much the more, amen, as we grow, we grow older and older in Christ, amen. We've got to keep this thing new and fresh. I will remind you, and i got to go slower, but I will, I feel my help right here. I will remind you that the scripture says, Jesus said, except you, except you, uh, receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you won't receive it. Except I know you're seasoned, I know you've been around it for years, but let me remind you that there has to be a, a mentality in you as a child. What does that mean? You've got to believe God like a child believes God. You've got to be willing to praise and express yourself the way a child expresses and praises. Amen. You've got to, I realize some, some elders in the room can't do what you used to do, and that's all right. I understand that but we the point is that we are never exempt amen from expressing ourselves to a holy righteous lovely pure God who pulled me out of the pits of hell and gave me another chance come on that doesn't expire that praise that I've got in me doesn't God doesn't come with an expiration date because God has been good to me Oh, this has got to stay fresh to us. This has got to stay new to us. I'll remind you, he committed to being new to you. He committed, amen, to you mercy that is new every single moment morning. He committed to you that he would walk with you in the mountains and in the valleys. He said there will never be a place that I will not go with. So you better hear me. God has committed to you not just when you spoke in tongues but he's committed to you today and you've got to be committed as committed today as you have ever been in your life. Lest you become weary. Lest you become tempted. Lest you become cold on God and miss out on what he has for you. I don't want to become cold, amen, to God and the Spirit of God because I understand his word. I don't want to become cold, amen, and expressing myself to the Lord because I know things now. No, 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 no. The more I know, the more praise I have, the more I understand, the more gratitude I have to give, the more I realize what he pulled me out of the more I have to offer to my God. Somebody say amen. I want to give some tips. Oh, my. Oh, God. I'm thankful. Brother Brown, this gets sweeter and sweeter. 
It doesn't get, it doesn't get stale. It, it, come on, it's like manna in the Old Testament. It's new every single morning. We can, we can, let, we can, all we like sheep have gone astray, the Bible says. We've all had moments where we've grown cold on God. I've been there just like the rest of us, but you've got to get back into the fold and understand that I need him today just like I needed him yesterday. Come on, it's like manna. It's, if you leave it there, it's going to dry up, but you've got to take what you need for today come on tomorrow's going to take care of itself the problem's going to take care come on but you got to get what you need for today somebody say amen let me give you some tips on reading the bible I feel the Lord here this morning is everybody all right I probably st- I, I don't apologize I feel the Lord amen amen it's it's easier in understanding the Bible, it's easier to understand the Bible when you read it every day. It's not a slap in the face. That's not a hard statement. That's just a true statement. It's easier to read something when you're reading it every day. The more you read it, the more you'll understand it. I try my very best to read my Bible every day. But in the event that I don't, I make a commitment to read it the next day. If you have ever missed a day of reading your Bible, raise your hand. Wow. Look at all the humans in the building. I can't believe you. I cannot believe you. We've all missed a day of reading our Bible. But if you miss one, don't miss two. you've missed a church service before, raise your hand. Oh, look at all the sinners in the house. <laughs> if you've missed one, don't miss two. There's reasons, there's vacations, and there's sickness, and there's plans, and that's all fine and good. Our pastor approves of that and for that. But, 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 but don't, don't make a habit of, of making church attendance optional. Amen. It's easier when you do it daily. It's easier when you read the Bible every day. So make a commitment to daily reading. And if you don't read it that day, don't beat yourself up so you miss two days. Right? Don't don't live in the guilt of that. Just pick it up and, and get going, all right? Get to reading. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Throw in a pity part. I didn't read. God doesn't love me. Pick it up and read. All right? You're going to be all right. Just pick it up and read the second day. It, it, it all comes back. This, this, I can't talk about this part without talking about the importance of a daily routine. It's important that we have a daily routine. Amen. It's important. I would highly recommend, as a matter of fact, I don't think you can be successful without an appointed time where you are going to pray and read. I don't think, I don't think you can be successful in daily devotion if it's just this flimsy thing that when I get when when I can I'll get to it. I don't think that works. Um, and and uh, I, I've as a matter of fact I've never found I've never spoken to a person where that has worked for a long period of time. It just doesn't work. And so I would encourage you. Why was why was there a holy hush over the crowd right there? Is everybody okay? Am I stepping on somebody's toes? Well, let me help you. Set up a time. Set up a time to pray and to read. Why? Because what, what does that do? That, that shows you, you schedule other things, right? You schedule doctor's appointments. You schedule, you schedule lessons for your kids. You schedule, you schedule all this stuff. You know, they're at, the school, they're at school the same time every day. You're at work the same time every day. You, you got a schedule for other things, and, and you have a schedule because it's important. And you got to be, and you got to be there, and you got to do it. You ought to schedule daily devotion. Why? Because it's important. I'm not taking meetings during my daily devotion. So if somebody asks me for a meeting that's during my daily devotion, my reply to them is, "I'm sorry, I'm not available at that time." Because I'm not available at that time. I have something going. Now, if my wife comes to me and she says, "You know," 
Sometimes that's a different scenario, but, uh, you know, because she lives with me. She knows. She understands, she understands what's going on in the house but, and things that have to happen. But, but, but when somebody comes to me, I, I, don't, I don't schedule things in my devotion time with the Lord. Does this make sense? So schedule your time with the Lord. And if you miss that time, make a plan right then of when you're going to do it later in the day. Is everybody good with that? Everybody okay with that? Is that, is that bad? Is that bad to say? I don't think it is. I'll just give you an example. Yesterday, I missed my prayer time. <gasps> the preacher missed his prayer time. I did. Before God, I missed my prayer time in the morning. You want to know why? World War III is in my house right now. Right now. It's happening in my house. Stuff's flying everywhere. Listen, y'all, the up to Graham Homes got the bug. Okay? It, they, we got the bug. I'm sorry. Don't come near me. I feel fine. I'm not sick. But we got the bug. Okay? It, it's, it's bad. It's just bad news. You got a kid waking up out of a dead sleep, you know, doing some crazy stuff. I, I, I don't need to go into descriptives, but your, your imagination can connect the dots. I'm telling you, it's happening in all forms, shapes, and sizes in the up to grave house right now. Okay? So I woke up this morning. I woke up yesterday morning to, to, to you know, it's like bobcats were in our house. It's like, it's like stuff was just moving and going, and, and, and I'm, I'm trying to help Lauren, and I'm, I'm trying to this, this, this. And, and so I missed that morning slot. But you want to know what I did <laughs> to make you all feel better about, about the preacher today? I prayed at nighttime instead of praying in that morning slot. And so I determined, okay, morning didn't go as I, come on, how many humans in the building have you ever gotten sick in the morning and not been able to pray? Have, have you ever had kids, things going on? Anybody with kids? It, it, okay, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless. So, so it, it, we've all had scenarios and things come up to where it doesn't work. So I would encourage you, instead of just leaving it for the day and saying, I'm, well, I missed today. I'm, I'm a failure and I'm not going to do it. No, try to establish another time during that day where you can pick it up and pray and, 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 read, uh, and read the word of God. Does this make sense? Is everybody okay with that? Some of you just took a collective deep breath. You're like, wow, you know, there's humans here. Yeah, there, we're, we're people. We have things that happen and go on. Uh, some of you are worried that you're going to get sick. You're not going to get sick. You're going to be all right. Uh, uh, I, I would also recommend, how many of you have an alarm clock? Some of you don't need an alarm clock because you've done it for 30 years, but I still need one. How many of you have an alarm clock? I have an alarm clock, but how many of you, if you'd be honest with the preacher today, that your alarm clock w is within reach of your bed? Uh-huh. Sniffing them out today. <laughs> yep. I'm going to preach to you today. You know, it's amazing how far. I've never seen somebody more flexible than when they are trying to reach an alarm clock. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you grow six inches in the morning. It's like, it's like your arm just like, it's like, a, it's unbelievable. You, you wouldn't believe how creative we get in trying to get to that alarm clock. You know what I mean? Here's, here's my suggestion. If you're a snooze button person, how many of you, if you would be honest with the Lord and I this morning, you say, you know what, I, that snooze button, me and that snooze button, every morning we're in a war. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus is going to help you today. If you got a problem with that snooze button, let me give you a couple things. Number one, studies say that you're most awake the first time you wake up, and if you go back to bed, you're going to be more tired throughout the day. So that's on the practical side. You're going to feel more awake if you get up when you wake up. Number two, if if it's just unpredictable. If, if you continuously, you're snoozing, you don't, you don't know when you're coming out. So you need to make a decision. So here's what you need to do. I'm going to help all of you alarm clock snooze people. Set your, you know, because and such were some of you. I, I was one of those people, you know, but I've been delivered. Hallelujah. 
So if you're one of those people where you can't get up out of bed, set your alarm clock away from your bed to where you have to get out of the bed to hit your alarm clock. Oh, here we go. Is everybody all right? Everybody, I'm helping you right now. Don't, you know, test it out. You know, see, you know, test it out before, before bedtime. You know, see if you can reach it. You know, <laughs> give, give it a try. And if you can't reach it, it's in a good spot. And then when the alarm glo- goes off, stand up and make a commitment. I'm not sitting back down until I know who I am, where I am, what day it is, who my family members are, like all of that. Make a commitment. I'm not sitting back. I'm helping some of you right now. Amen. Make a commitment to not sit back down until you're coherent. Um, I... Uh, so that that that's something to help you with with your morning routine. I, some of you can. I I in particular cannot. I cannot go from alarm goes off, hit the alarm, hit my knees in prayer. I can't do it. I can't. Confession time. I can't. If I've tried it and I can't. If I do, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on the floor. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be somewhere asleep. Okay, I can't go immediately into prayer. Now there are moments, there's specific, there are unique times and things and all of that. I get that. But for the most part, I can't. And so I take a moment. I, I don't look at my phone. I don't start on any other business. My mind is on the Lord. But I take time to get ready. So I get a shower. I'll get ready. I'll get my clothes on. I'll get together. I'll get everything. I'll get everything to where I'm coherent and I'm awake and then I will pray. I, once I am awake, I'll pray. And I'll read my Bible. Because you try to read that Bible when you're asleep or sleepy. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, I know you. How, you come on, you, you've, you've read that Bible falling asleep. You know what I'm talking about? You, you read that, you know, you're, 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 in the, you're in numbers and you're like... You ever fall asleep reading your Bible? Yep, the real one's in here. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So, so make sure you're coherent when you're reading the Bible. It, that always helps with understanding the Bible, by the way. Is that fair? You're going to understand the Bible much better if you are awake. Okay, now let's move forward. Um, I, I've, uh, I've, I've heard this. I haven't heard it very often, but... If, you know, I've heard somebody say, well, I've read the Bible once. Why do I read it? Why do I need to read it again? The Bible is not just like another book, right? The Bible is not just like uh, 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 just this book that you complete and then you put away. The Bible is alive. The Bible is active. What does that mean? What does that mean, the Bible is alive? 1 Peter 1.23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, what? Which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God is alive. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick. That, that, that word quick, it means it's alive and active. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It goes on. It says, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is alive and active. It it discerns between the thoughts and intents of your heart. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Watch the word. It's talking about the word. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. How is the word of God alive? I'll tell you how it's alive. It's alive because God's word, amen, it, when God's word is spoken and God's word is written, that means every promise, amen, in this book is alive and available to you. Every promise, every prophecy, amen, everything in this book, it is alive and it is, and so when he says, behold, lo, 
lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. That is a promise from this Bible, amen, not just to the people that were in it, but it's to us today. When the Bible says he is nigh or near unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such that be of a contrite spirit, that is a promise to you, amen, that he is alive and he is near, amen. The Bible says he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Sticketh, that's present tense. That means he's still sticking close to you now because the Bible is still alive because God is still alive. Amen. Because God is still alive, his words are still alive and active and available for you to claim today. Somebody say amen. But, but let's, let's get more practical on this. Why, why continuously read the Bible? Why not read it once and put it down? Why every day for your entire life, why read the word of God? Every time, here's what I have found, what what Cody has found. Every time that I read the Bible, it speaks to me in different ways. In different, I have found that in different seasons of my life, the Bible has spoken to me in different ways. When I was a teenager, the Bible spoke to me in one way. And when I became a father, the Bible spoke to me in another way. Amen. It, it just did. When I was a teenager, it was a, it was a time of consecration and, and, and sacrifice and giving. And we ought to always have that. But it was an important time in my life. And so it was like those scriptures and those stories came alive to me. Because that's where I was at. That's what I was living through. That's what I needed. And so that it was like everything that had to do with that, like surfaced to the top. You understand? When I became a husband, I saw the Bible in a different way because, because I couldn't understand, I couldn't understand the scripture and the command of the Lord uh, when, when the Bible says, uh, men love your wife, amen, as Christ loved the church. I, I couldn't fully understand that until I had a spouse. And so when I had, and when I became married, I saw the word of God in a different light than I did as a teenager. When I had a child, my first child, I understood the Bible in a different way. As a matter of fact, it was one of the most pivotal times in the way I view this Bible in my entire life. I did not understand fully the love of a father until I was a father. I did not comprehend the love, the mercy, and grace of a father until I became one. When that baby was born and I held him in my arms, I had a new understanding of the love of God. I could not comprehend until that moment. Even then, I probably just scratched the surface, but I, I didn't comprehend how much God loved me until I looked at my boy. I was holding in my arms and the eyes and and thought about how much I loved him, how much I would give to him, what great lengths that I would go to to keep him and protect him. I understood the Bible in a different light when I got to a different season of my life. That's why we must constantly and continuously have a diet of the word of God because it will actively speak to where you are, what you are going through, what stage of life that you are in. There will always be a there will always be Bible for where you are living and for what you need. That's why we've got to read it. That's why we've got to consume it. That's why it has to become a daily habit because God speaks to us, deals with us, instructs us through his word, and we've got to continuously read it. Somebody say amen. For example, right now I'm in the book of Nahum. Not every day you're in the book of Nahum, but I'm in the book of Nahum. And I did not know until yesterday that Nahum prophesied 
of the destruction of Nineveh. And it came to pass. I've read the Bible through multiple times, but for whatever reason, until this time, I haven't seen it the way I see it now. Because here's the deal. My connection to Nineveh is always Jonah. Right? How many of you are like, yeah. Because that's what you should do, right? My connection to Nineveh was always Jonah. But this time, for whatever reason, and reading the Bible through, it just clicked. 50 to 75 years after Jonah goes to Nineveh and preaches and, and the people turn and repent, something in that 50 to 75 years happens. Uh, Nineveh makes a turn back away from God and to the things of the world. I didn't know this and I didn't understand this. And Nineveh was destroyed 70, around 75 years after Jonah preached to him. I didn't understand that. So it's important to know that, that, that there will never come a point in your Bible reading where you read all the way through and have an understanding of everything. I'm still almost daily, definitely weekly, catching new things in the Word of God as I'm reading through it. Amen. The Bible says, as new babes desire the sincere, the sincere milk of the word, we ought to desire the milk of the word. And if we, amen, will hunger and thirst after, the, after righteousness, the Bible says that we shall be filled. If you're looking for it, you're going to find it. If you're looking for truth, you're going to find truth. If you will determine to search for truth, guess what? You're going to find truth. You're going to find more and more truth as the days go by. Somebody say amen. Okay, let me, let me move quickly, 10, 1038. You know, I've never gotten to a point in these morning sessions where, where I have little enough. No, It always seems like I have too much. And today I thought, like, this isn't going to be a lot. I'm not going to have a lot. And, and we'll end early. I, I just, I, just pray for me. I'm sorry that I, I have a lot. Um, uh, uh, next, how, how to understand the Bible. Um, read, read the Bible in different ways. Read the Bible in different ways. Turn to your neighbor and say, read the Bible in different ways. Everybody with me? I've switched subjects here. Read how to understand the Bible. Point number three, read the Bible in different ways. Okay. You eat food in different ways, right? You eat, some of you eat meals. Some of you eat meals and snacks. Some of you eat appetizers, meals, and then snacks. Uh-huh. You eat in different ways, so you ought to read in different ways. You ought to digest the, the word of God in different ways. Don't, don't depend on a perfect scenario for, uh, to read your Bible. In the stage of life that, that, that my family and I are in, perfect scenarios are, uh, they, they, they happen. <laughs> perfect scenarios happen, but, but, you're getting curveballs probably 30%, 30 to 40% of the time in your life. You know, kids, right? Bobcats in the house. <laughs> and uh, it's just unpredictable at times. So don't depend on just way, one way of consuming the Word of God. Um, you can read, you can read the Bible um, fast. You can read the Bible slow. You can, you, there are times when I read the Bible as a replacement to being on media. I'm, I'm not reading it necessarily to dig, to take a deep dive into it. I'm reading it because I identify this time in my day as a time of day where I usually will spend too much time on media. So instead of being on media, I'll spend time in the Word of God. Is everybody okay? So, 
so there's, there's, there's a great option for this. It's a U, how many have the version app? It's version. There's, a, there's a audio Bibles on there and plans that you can listen to the Bible, um, that you can listen to the Bible through. You can set goals. You can track your progress. You can, you can click daily things, and, and, and you can do all those things. I would encourage that. I, I would not encourage that to be your only form of ingesting the Bible because it, that's kind of just a get through it. That can be a get through it type thing, but at the same time, it can be very beneficial. Because, because I will remind you that the Bible says whatever, whatever goes into your eyes and in your ears ends up in your heart. Amen. And so it's important to, to prioritize the things that go into your eyes and into your ears. And so by, by listening to the Bible, you are letting good, godly things into your ears. And guess what? If you listen to that stuff long enough, it's going to get to your heart. And so it's a good thing. And so make yourself available to that. Don't lock yourself into the Bible just one particular way. You can read slow. You can, you, and I, I've already talked about that at length. You can do a topical study on, on certain topics in the Bible, the love of God, mercy. You can, you can do uh, uh, topical studies on holiness and giving and, and, and all of these different things. You can do topical studies and look at the, the Bible as a whole on what it says in certain topics. In, in topical studies, you need to end up in the New Testament. Um, and so it, that's, that's important to understand. But um, so, uh, uh, so read the Bible, digest the Bible in different ways. Amen. The important thing is, is just get it in your life. Make it a part of your habits and your daily routines. Let's stand together. Last thing I'll end on is take notes in your Bible. Did you know it's not sacrilegious to write in your Bible? Did you know that? It's, it's okay to take notes in your Bible. I've not marked up this Bible a lot, but, but the Bible that, I, that I've read with, I, I've got highlighted, I've got marked, I've got, uh, I've got sticky notes that I'll, I'll do different things with. Write in your Bible. A lot of times, if, if you'll do that over a period of years, you'll make connections to other things and other places in the Word of God. It's an amazing it's an amazing tool that you can use. And, you know, when pastor preaches, re- record notes and uh, highlights in your Bible, that's, that's so good for, for your daily devotion and study and understanding the Bible. Somebody say amen to that. I don't, want, I don't want to read the Bible just to check it off a list. I don't want to read the Bible just because that's what good people are supposed to do. I want to read the Bible because I want to know my God. I want to know why I am doing what I am doing and why I am living the way that I am living. I want to know why. And furthermore, I want the God of this book to reach down and to speak to me to where I am and to where I'm going and to what I need to change and to what I need to be. I am reliant upon this book, so I've got to understand it. Amen. Lift your hands with me all over the room. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth of your word. I give you honor. I give you praise for what you have given to us. I pray that we would make a commitment to understanding your word. I pray that we would commit to daily Bible reading. I pray that we would commit, God, to digesting your word in different ways. I pray, God, that we would commit, Lord, to to study, to show ourselves approved. I pray, God, that your word would be alive and active in our life, that we would receive and experience the great promises of this book. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Thank God for his word. Amen.